Hello everyone, my name is David Kiernan and I'm a Curriculum Officer at NCFE and you're very welcome to this webinar for the Unit 3 of the Level 1 and Level 2 Technical Award in Interactive Media. I'm joined today by Leslie Davis, one of our external quality assurers and a subject spe specialist in interactive media. The plan for today's webinar is to give an overview of this VCERT qualification. We'll go through a summary of the learning outcomes and grading descriptors for Unit 3, learning outcome 1, 2, and 3. We are going to look at some examples of learners' work. And finally, we will be addressing any questions that you may have. But throughout this entire webinar, do please put questions into the question box and we will address them. I will also be given an update in, with regards to the COVID-19 pandemic as well. So to begin with though, I would just like to start with a poll just about how you currently feel in terms of confidence with the assessing and grading of the interactive media unit three. So one being not very confident at all, 10 being quite confident. So hopefully you should see that poll in front of you now. Looks like we've got quite a mixed bag at the minute. Uh, I'll give another 10, 15 seconds or so. At the minute, 20% uh, of people in the one to two range, 40% in five to six, and 40% and, uh, in the seven to eight range. Well, hopefully this webinar, oh, it's an even split now. 33% in one to two, 33% in five to six, and 33% in the seven to eight range. I'm just going to close off this uh, this poll and we'll continue then with first of all an overview of this qualification because you may have um, some people here who have started this qualification for the first time very new to it so it will be an overview of the whole qualification. If you need a more comprehensive information regarding the level one and level two technical awards, we do have induction webinars that run monthly for them, and they will also be found on our YouTube channel. So the level one and level two technical award in interactive media consists of an external assessment, which is worth 40% of the final grade, and the internally assessed coursework, which is worth 60% of the final grade. Interactive media does consist of four mandatory units, and each unit is internally assessed with the coursework. Each of these units are also externally assessed with an invigilated external assessment. Learners are entitled to one resubmission of the internally assessed coursework following the EQA visit. And if your learners are doing the level two qualification, then they'll need to achieve a minimum of a level two pass in each of the four internal assessments, as well as the external assessment. And QualHub is going to be your primary go-to for resources, specification, the assessment, regulations, and so much more. So if you begin by typing your qualification subject area in there, or if you know the Qual code, the, the whole um, 603 slash, et cetera, or even just interactive media, you can get a list of suggested qualifications to bring you to your subject page. Now for the coursework, as we are focusing on the internal assessments, we do have assignments that are ready for you to use on the interactive media qual hub page. So there is an assignment for each of the internally assessed units. You may wish to change aspects of the scenario so that's more suitably contextualized for your learners. You can write your own assignments if you wish from scratch, but these could save you quite a bit of time by going to these internal assessment sample tasks. The first thing on the brief that you'll notice is the scenario. And as I mentioned, this is designed to give a real life situation in order to help set the assignment in context, but you may want to change that so it's more suitably contextualized for your learners. After that, um, the assignment gives some further details on the specific information that should be included in the learner's evidence. 
then the way the evidence can be presented and we've tried to keep this as open as possible to appeal to many different types of learners and then on that following page as well are the grade descriptors and this is what the learners need to do for that grade of past merit or distinction it's also what the assessors are going to be using when marking it it's what the external quality assurers are going to be looking at when grading it so that's the most important part to a certain extent of the assignments now each unit in interactive media consists of three or four learning outcomes and each learning outcome is graded so to get a pass in a unit, then the learner needs to achieve a minimum of a pass for each of the learning outcomes. So in this example here, the learner has got a pass in learning outcome one, and they got merits in the other two outcomes. This means the final grade for the unit one is a pass. They have to have that same level of competency in each learning outcome if we're to judge the whole unit to be of that level. So basically the lowest grade they get in a, in a learning outcome is their overall grade for that unit. So there's no compensatory system within a unit. However, when it comes to working out their final grade for overall for the qualification, when unit one, unit two, unit three, and unit four get combined, there is compensatory grading there. So they can have a mix of grades there and it wouldn't be the lowest grade that counts that way. Now, as I said, that was a um, very brief overview. If you need something more comprehensive, we do have recorded ones or live ones every month that you can join on regarding the level one and level two technical awards. Now, if you are currently though delivering this qualification, then undoubtedly you've been affected to some extent by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I wanna provide you with an update on the current situation. Um, Ofqual have released, I believe today, unfortunately it wasn't, I didn't have a chance to, adjust this PowerPoint in time. But today they are or have released the VCRF, the new framework for the awarding of vocational qualifications. Now this qualification can be assessed via teacher assessed grades, but do try and make sure that all the internal assessments do continue as possible because you will need evidence when it comes to submitting teacher assessed grades. They would have to be based on evidence. If you manage to get the assignments done and coursework done as normal, that's fine. You will be able to submit grades as either a normal submission, where you've managed to do the work as normal, or as a teacher assessed grades. For the external assessments, we the one in the summer has been cancelled, and the one that took place in January, that was optional. Um, because it happened in January, at the very end of January, the government said that any assessments that were due to take place in January, it was down to the centres. Centres could decide whether learners sat it or not. But the ones for the rest of this academic year are cancelled and it would be a teacher assessed grades that would be given. And any teacher assessed grade is on an assessment level rather than a qualification level. What I mean by that is you would not be saying to us, Tommy has got a pass overall you won't be saying that for interactive media. Instead, you'll be telling us his external assessment grade is this, unit one grade is this, unit two grade, internal assessment grade is this, and so on. It has to be on that assessment level. As mentioned, based on evidence. That could be already completed assessments, evidence from other assessment activity, classwork, homework, mock exams, etc. Now tags as well can be submitted for mid-flight learners. For example, learners in the first year of a two-year course, such as year 10s. So tags can be submitted for though that work that they would have completed uh, during this academic year. For the external assessment, when it comes to submitting tags, you do have to still book a learner onto the assessment they would have sat. You can't submit a tag unless they're actually booked onto that external assessment. If your learners already have got a banked grade or a banked uh, external assessment grade, or even a CAG from the previous academic year, then you don't need to submit a tag to us for the external assessment. You can though, if they were entitled to a reset, then you can submit a tag, but if they already have a banked grade, it's not required. But some learners might have been entitled to a reset and therefore you would be submitting that to us. We will have some webinars actually running next week. 
and I do have a link here to this page, uh, which I will just open up. So when you go to ncfe.org.uk, there's a big banner straight away that says COVID-19 response. When you go on there, you will be able to join the webinars that we are running next week and sign for them. So I will just uh, briefly show you that, just so you know where that is. And I do see there are some questions that have come in. So on ncfe.org.uk, just go to the COVID-19 response right there at the forefront of ncfe.org.uk. When I scroll down this page, there is a bit that says about support for you. Our support for you. Hopefully uh, that's loaded up now. When you go on to there, that's where you'll be able to see links to join or sign up to webinars that are happening next week. So on April 1st, there are webinars for the awarding to VCERTs and at uh, 12 p.m. And there's also another one there regarding making tag guidance or making judgments on tags as well. So you will be able to sign up for those there. Right then, just before I hand over to Leslie, I'm just gonna have a quick look at the questions that have come in, just to make sure. Will a recording of this be made available? Yes, a recording of this and I don't know if you're referring to this one right now that's being delivered or those COVID ones, but either way, the, yes, any webinar we do, we always try and make them available, put them on YouTube, our YouTube channel, and anyone who's attended this and signed up and attended this, you will actually get an email with a link to this recording. Uh, it usually takes 24 hours, so at some point tomorrow, you'll get a link to this recording. I don't see any other questions at the minute that have been typed in. Um, I do have a hand up though. Uh, oh, the hand's gone down, never mind. Okay, uh, I think that's it from me. I'm going to hand over to Leslie now, who will actually take you through some of the uh, some of the more specific stuff to do with Unit Three of Interactive Media. Thanks, David. That was a really useful um, overview of resources there, and. Um, the update um, regarding the Ofqual consultation, which I'm sure everybody will have lots of questions at a, a more convenient time than, than in this webinar, but thanks for that. Uh, so welcome everybody, it's good to have you here today, um, and hopefully you'll find this uh, webinar useful for Unit 3. As I go through the learning outcomes, if you have any questions as we go, please use the chat box and I will pause between moving on to the next learning outcome and we can address those questions as they come in. That is uh, the best way to do it rather than using the hands up icon. Um, I am aware that we're using lots of different platforms and applications, um, but that is the best way to make sure that we don't miss any questions to put them in uh, the chat box. Um, so David can alert me to those before we move through to the next learning outcome. Okay, so unit three, the development and production of an interactive media product. There's three learning outcomes here. Understand how to use appropriate software and hardware for the development and creation of an interactive media product and its assets. Learn outcome two, to create an interactive media product to meet a brief. And learn outcome three, to review working processes as well as the interactive media product. So this is where learners were in this unit, learners will develop um, and produce uh, an outcome, an interactive outcome. And then they will need to demonstrate um, their understanding of these three learning outcomes. So just to remind you, the unit content would be delivered prior to any learners undertaking or being set an internal assessment task. 
So really important that the unit contents delivered first and then they are issued an internal assessment task. And we sometimes refer to that as a project brief or an assignment brief. Um, however, on the Qual Hub, if you are looking to use those templates or those examples that NCFE have produced, they are called internal assessment tasks there, just to avoid any confusion. So learning outcome one, so there's quite a lot of content here to be delivered for this particular learning outcome. Um, and as mentioned, once this content of delivery folder structures, file types and exported options, hardware solutions and associated features, software solutions, associated tools, and the needs of different audiences and users, once that content's been delivered, that's when uh, learners can be issued a internal assessment task. Now, some centres prefer to do this in three small um, internal assessment tasks, if you like. So they like to deliver the content of learning outcome one and deliver an assignment, issue an assignment, deliver content for learning outcome two, issue an assignment, deliver content for learning outcome three, issue assignment. So there's three small assignments there for this unit. However, it's up to you as assessors and as your centre and, and you can approach this however you feel best suits your learners' needs and your resources, your teaching expertise, etc. So some centres also like to deliver, deliver all of the content first for learning outcomes one, two and three, and then issue learners with an assignment brief at the end to demonstrate the understanding. So however approach, whichever approach you have, um, this is the content that learners must be able to demonstrate their understanding of for assessment. So if we can move on to the level two assessment criteria here. Now, there is quite a focus on the practical side of this. So it's very much a understand learning outcome. However, you'll notice that the assessment criteria is very much focused on apply. So for a pass, we've got correctly applies some technical terms with examples, explanations. For a merit, correctly applies a range of technical terms and distinction. We've got consistency there and correct, correctly applies a wide range. So we'll be looking for the full range of those um, of examples related to those bullets that we've just previously looked at for the biggest content here. So they may have some examples and some appropriate technical terminology for a pass, um, a range, so maybe two or three for a merit, and a distinction, we'd probably be looking for the full range there that they've got examples for all of those bullet points. So there is quite a lot of content to, to be delivered here. We do appreciate that. But there is a focus on the practical nature of this. So the practical use um, of this uh, experimentation of software, hardware, um, you know, making sure that they can export, use export options correctly, depending on what they're producing as well. Some centres like to keep this focused on one particular um, area so that they might just want to be asking learners to produce for example a website or a mobile application and some centres like to give them a little bit more variation so they might ask them to do maybe um, a prototype of uh, maybe a, a web page just one web page maybe an interface uh, an interactive interface maybe a powerpoint presentation as well with some um, authoring in there so it's entirely up to yourselves how to do that just bear in mind of the time that you will need to deliver the content as well as allowing time learners to actually undertake that assignment after the content's been delivered. So here the criteria is actually looking for how students, how learners are rep uh, representing their knowledge and understanding of these technical terms of those bullet points um, on the first, the previous slide that we've just looked at there, which is the content. Now we are flexible regarding evidence format. Um, we do get quite a lot of evidence that shows screenshots, um, maybe students looking at a particular software. It could be Dreamweaver, it could be uh, creating assets in Fireworks or any other relevant, and we don't stipulate what software that centres have to use either. So whichever software that you're using, but one way, um, and we do see quite a lot of that, is screenshots of the practical application 
and annotations that will show these technical terms being applied. Um, this is how the criteria then would be evidenced within these screenshots and annotations to, sh to show um, the examples and technical terms being applied here. But again, it doesn't have to be in a written response. Um, if, if learners wanted to present evidence for learning outcome one, that's absolutely fine. Um, so it could be a presentation or any other relevant format is absolutely fine. And then moving on to the level one grading criteria. So it's the same approach, um, less demand here because it's, it's level one, but the same approach with regards to technical terms being um, explained here within the practical work. So again, still quite a practical learning outcome and students could have maybe some lists or bullet points. Um, and again, we wouldn't be looking for a pass such a you know a correct or accuracy with that sort of subject terminology but they could be used in sort of everyday language uh, to simple bait to list simple points but you know they, they'd be definitely showing working towards that there is some understanding of um the, those contents within the previous slide of those uh for the for the learning outcome so things like software um techniques that they've used folder structures etc and then again, we've got for merit is some technical terms. Um, and again, even at distinction, we're only looking for some technical terms, but there would be some um, simple examples there. So they'd be able to make some connections. So again, very much a practical learning outcome, um, but learners do have to sort of demonstrate their understanding using the, you know, the correct type of language um, and technical subject terminology. And before I move on to learning outcome two, I'll just pause to see if there's any questions that are coming. Sorry, I forgot I, I forgot I was on mute. Um, no, no questions at the minute. So yeah, good to go on to learning outcome two. Okay, great. So we'll move on to learning outcome two. And this is where the learners will use the knowledge um, and the techniques, processes that they've sort of started to explore in Learn Outcome 1, and they'll actually create an interactive media product here to meet a brief. So this is also about demonstrating technical skills, but you will notice right within the title that there is an absolute focus on meeting a brief. So assessors must um, provide learners with an appropriate brief here that they can respond to and create a product to. So it's not about learners being able to have free reign of um, what they produce for this learning outcome and indeed for the whole unit because learning outcome three also links in with this um, responding to a brief but they must be able to use their knowledge and understanding of using hardware solutions, software solutions, appropriate techniques, and also time management and meeting deadlines, and are very much to prepare them for sort of um, the next level, level three, or um, definitely for sort of work ethics within in that sec in the sector. So this learning outcome, Although it is very practical, it is also tied very much to responding to a brief. So really important that assessors issue learners with an appropriate brief um, to do this. So there is examples on Qualhub that David um, pointed out earlier. So these are useful, they are useful examples. You may find that the scenario presented to students isn't quite right for your learners, but by all means, um, adapt that but it, they are a good starting point because it will illustrate the type of information that needs to be in that brief in order for learners to be able to succeed and respond well to this particular learning outcome for the unit. 
I'll just move on to the assessment criteria. So quite a lot of um, criteria to, to sort of read through on the screen here. And what's useful for this particular LL outcome that we've got some examples of what that might look like on the right hand column here um, in practice. So I think this is a really good um, example and approach to, to support assessors here. And we don't they don't provide it for, for all learning outcomes, um, but for this one it, it's it's being provided and it is particularly useful. So for the actual production process for a pass, learners will show the application of technical skills in meeting the brief. So it's really focused there, meeting the brief and responding to any straightforward problems that arise. I'll talk a little bit about what we mean there shortly. And then for a merit, it's still talking about um, straightforward problems that arise but here we'll be looking for more effective application of technical skills. And for a distinction, it's a consistent and effective application of technical skills. Again, it still must meet the brief um, and efficiently solving any straightforward problems that arise. So the, the focus here is the practical application of skills, but also is for learners to um, be documenting and responding to any problems that they encounter as they create their product. So they may be keeping um, a project diary, they may be keeping some technical notes, but there does need to be some evidence of any problems that they encounter. Um, and they, they don't need to be, you know, sort of complex technical issues here that, you know, even at past merit and distinction, we're still looking for straightforward problems, but it's how learners have responded to these. So for a pass, they might respond um, within some notes saying they've encountered a particular um, issue when they've actually been, um, maybe it might be creating a, a rollover for a button and they might have responded within their notes, but they haven't really been able to solve the issue. So they might have left that sort of error within their, within their product. Um, whilst at a merit would be see some more effective solving of that problem. So have they looked at alternative ways that they may be able to fix that issue um, and distinction would expect to be able them to see, well, not maybe not all of the errors or the problems that they encounter, but definitely some efficiency in solving um, some technical issues, uh, problems that, that have arisen within the creation of the product. So again, it's a little bit twofold here for learning outcome two. So there's a practical application of software, hardware to create a product. Again, it must be in response to a brief. And then also there is this sort of second part of evidencing that they are documenting and responding to problems as they create that product. So please ensure um, that you allow time for students, uh, learners to be able to do that. And then moving on to the level one criteria. Um, and this again is the same approach. So it, we are looking for the production process. However, the demand is much lower and learners actually only need to evidence here to two areas, which is the use of software and the use of techniques. Um, so they, they don't have to evidence that the full list of criteria that was at the start um, of the content for this learning outcome. So for a pass production process will show a relationship with the, with the brief. Again, it could be very simple statements, could be a one sentence to relate to the brief to do, could be maybe target audience, colour scheme. Um, but there will be some evidence that there's a relationship to the brief. Uh, for a merit, the production process will show use of some technical skills. So we'll be looking for um, at least some development of technical skill there. And a distinction, we'll be looking for some consistent use of technical skills. Again, still a focus on meeting the brief throughout the pass, merit and distinction. Um, so just two areas, software and use of techniques here. And again, there's some exemplification on the right hand column to, to help and support assessors of what that might look like in practice in the learner's evidence. And again, I'll pause again before we move on to learning outcome three. See if there's any questions. 
just having a look now. Um, no, there seem to be any uh, questions at the minute, so good to go on to um, learning outcome three. Okay, great, thank you. So learning outcome three is about review. So it's reviewing learners' own working processes as well as their interactive media product that they've created in Learning Outcome 2. So again, quite a lot of content to address here. Um, centres find it useful, and this is based on centre feedback and assessor feedback, that it's actually good practice to use these as prompts in the internal assessment task to ensure that learners will attempt at least, okay? So there will be some compensation as when we get to the assessment criteria where we use descriptors, things like sum, range, etc. But by using these as prompts, um, it gives learners you know, a good head start really if this is in the task. So it sort of allows them then to be able to respond and review appropriately within these areas because there is quite a lot of content there to, to review. And again, you'll see um, this slight difference with what level two learners and level one learners need to include within their review. And again, they're, they're indicated in brackets there. And this is also indicated in the specification. This has just been taken directly from the specification here. So yeah, it's good choice, good idea, good prompt, um, good practice to, to use these as prompts in the assessment task. So looking at the level two grading criteria, so even at a pass, you know, identify outlines, not looking for a great deal of detail here, and it could be basic ways to improve the outcome and the production process. So really important with the level two criteria that learners focus on the improve. Um, we, there can be some misinterpretation for this because it's a review learning outcome. Uh, we do get lots of evidence that sort of talks about the strengths and weaknesses, how well the learner thinks they've performed, the skills they've developed, and they don't sort of write anything, or if it's a presentation, they don't talk anything about the improvements uh, to the production process and the product. And that really does limit uh, limit the criteria because they can't, without actually outlining or identifying even a basic way to improve, they can't actually achieve a pass. So it's really important that that's targeted within the assessment task. For a merit, again, it's still a focus on improvements, but these are more advanced ways. So we're looking for more than basic here for merit. And then for distinction, as well as the advanced ways, there's actually some development um, explanation of these ideas. So maybe some justification and reasons of why they think that that improvement should be made. And again, this should always link back to the brief as well. You also notice in the example, uh, exemplification on the right hand, uh, column here that the learners should be also using some feedback from others um, to make uh, relevant decisions on these improvements. So as well as actually reviewing um, and having their own opinion of the improvement, there should also be some feedback from others here. Now the feedback can be um, the group that they're working in, it could be the whole class, um, they might want to do a little survey, it can actually be tutor feedback as well. So the feedback can be in any form, but there should be at least one form of feedback um, external to their own opinion, if you like. So again, really can't focus enough here to reiterate that they, they, they must show, um, explain in whichever format, um, the improvement here of the outcome. And then moving on to the level one assessment criteria, again, similar approach, um, less demand here. So we're still looking for outline at pass, and it could be an obvious success or failure within the production process. So this can just be one success or one 
failure. It doesn't have to be both. For merit, we'll be looking for one success and one failure within the review and distinction, successes and failures. So there'll be more than one. So they might, for example, have two successes and one failure, but there should be um, at least three here. So some centres find this a little bit easier to understand because it's a little bit more quantified. Um, however, the focus still is on the review of the production process. What they don't need to do at level one is indicate improvements. That is just a requirement for level two. However, what they do need to have is some evidence of um, feedback from others here. Again, it could be a very simple survey. It could be some comments um, that they've asked their peers, their group or their tutor. And again, it could be quite basic uh, feedback here. And it's just to show that they've actually used um, other people's opinions on their product um, as well as their own opinion. And then before we move on to the learner work, I will see if there's any questions that are coming. Yep, there's a few questions that have popped in here, uh, Leslie. So could an improvement be to use other software? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So an improvement can be anything to do with if you think about the content, those bullet points earlier on, again, they're on the, on the unit specification. An improvement can be anything with regard to the software they've used, the hardware they've used, the techniques they've used. It, they might, we do see quite a lot um, to do with time management, if they had more time or if they had more, um, if they had improved their skills in a, in a certain area, that's fine as well. Sometimes that's linked to software. So yeah, that's a really valid improvement. Okay, um, another one asking if uh, Microsoft Forms as a questionnaire, would that be fine? Yes, that would be that would be a good approach. I think that would be um, a real efficient way to do that. Um, as long as learners, you know, are given some instruction, some support, how to set those up and create those, then yeah, that's fine. Yep. And the last one's for me. Uh, yes, Robin, I will. Just asking if I could, uh, at the end, re-explain the COVID-19 info for this award done at the start. Yeah, I can more than happy to highlight those key bits uh, regarding the COVID-19 approach at the minute. I believe centres are going to be getting an email today since we now have the new framework from Ofqual as well. So whoever usually received your those sort of um, serve our email newsletter and so on, they should get that today, uh, I believe as well, at some point between five and half five, we're making sure we've got the accurate information on there. But yeah, I'll highlight that a bit again. Okay, um, that's it for now, Leslie. Okay, okay. So with the first piece of learning work we'll look at, it has been graded at pass. So just to remind, remind you that for a pass for a unit, they must get a pass in learning outcome one, two and three. Um, so if for any reason, they didn't do so well. So, for example, a level two student, if they didn't indicate improvements in the review for that learn outcome three and they didn't pass learn outcome three, they wouldn't actually be able to pass the unit, even if they passed learn outcome one and two. So really important that we remember um, students must get a pass in all three learn outcomes to get a pass to the unit. Um, and just to remind you as well, please don't forget to download the slides for these um, because I do, we do go through them quite quickly um, and it is really useful to have your own copy to go through these in your own time with the assessment criteria uh, next to you. So this is just the start where the learners just put the title. So what they've done with this particular approach, they've actually used the content bullets um, here and they've used these as prompts to sort of um, structure their evidence. So they've actually started to talk quite literally about um, directory and folder structure. Then they've done a visualisation, a mind map here of what their folder structure, quite a basic representation here. And there's no explanation 
probably wouldn't need it too much at this at this stage. Then go on to talk about file types. That when they start to talk about file extensions, etc. Continue this with file size. And then they've talked a little bit about the assets that they're going to use. So they're starting now to apply some technical when we're talking about those technical terms in the assessment criteria for learning outcome one, this is an indication that the learner is doing that. They go on to talk about assets. And again, they've still got uh, valid examples using technical. What they've got here is they in their evidence. So this is actually the website that they've created and they've started to annotate them here. Within the actual learner's work, there was actually links here. You can see that they've been um, blacked out for the purpose of this, just to anonymise the link. But, you know, it is quite common that we do see uh, links to a product um, within the evidence of the internal assessment, which, which is useful and, and it's, it's, it's fine, it's good practice. So then they've continued to talk about the second page. And again, annotation, showing some relevant language here. And they've got their third page here. And what it's good to note here um, that there is actually evidence within the annotations throughout the evidence for learning outcome two, uh, for learning outcome three as well which is fine to award so it doesn't you know it, it's quite a holistic approach so if there's evidence for of review in other parts of the portfolio other parts of the learners work then it's absolutely fine to award that criteria there so they've got a final page so there's some ongo evidence of ongoing review there which is good However, you will note as well that um, the annotation is quite basic, uh, but it is sufficient for level two pass. And it's probably more focused on content rather than the techniques used. And then quite a detailed review here. And just to remind you for learning outcome three, the focus of assessment is based on the improvements stated by the learner. And a pass requires basic improvements using feedback, merit advanced improvements, advanced improvements with an explanation of these. So this page, although it's quite detailed, it is still a descriptive amount with no mention really here. Um, you know, it's, it's quite difficult to sort of find where, where the improvements are. And there's a second page here. So on this first page of the review, um, you know, there's no, there's no real improvements here being mentioned. However, when they do a second page of the review, it continues again in quite detail, still descriptive, and the only improvements are stated at the end are basic improvements. So this is why this would remain. Um, David, just before we move on to the merit, if we could just pull up the learner's site and we'll just do a quick demonstration. Yeah, absolutely. Student. Very well. So, 
um, what the actual website looked like in practice. So the student, the learner did actually um, create the, the product um, and it does work, it does function. So you can actually, um, do I have control, David? Yeah. So it's quite a true representation of what was in the screenshots there. Just thought it would be useful to actually demonstrate that. So quite a quite a basic um, website that they produced. It does meet the brief. There is some technical skill demonstrated, and again, those annotations really do support um, that that outcome that um, website as the outcome as the as the product so those annotations really do assist with that grade of pass so the second sample is for a merit and again this student has a learning outcome one merit learn outcome two merit and learn outcome three merit and just another quick example of how the grading works because it is quite common. Um, some students spend lots of time on creating, you know, a, a fantastic learning outcome too, a fantastic product. Um, however, they might think that the website speaks for itself and they haven't really give us any um, annotation to show any problems that they've solved. You know, if you remember that assessment criteria for learning outcome too, it's very much about documenting that production process. Um, so they may have got a distinction for learning outcome two and a merit for the review um, and a merit for the um, learning outcome one evidence. However, even with a much stronger product, it would still stay as a merit because they'd still need to work on getting a distinction for learning outcomes one and three. So here, what's been left in, and this, this student um, submitted their work in a PowerPoint presentation. So there was um, some parts of the internal assessment task within the presentation, and then they produced their evidence. Again, that's not an approach that's mandatory, but it's useful to see uh, a different approach to how centres um, sort of issue assignments for, for this particular unit. Again, they've started to use those content areas as, pro as bullet points, as headings for their evidence. And hopefully you can see straight away that although there is um, much more detail, so you know there's, there's a lot more quantity of text here, which is it doesn't always mean a higher grade. Um, when you start to read it, hopefully you can see the difference between the pass and merit here. Again, they're applying it to this range of technical terms required using valid examples that's required for a merit here. Mind map here, so a navigation structure here. And again, within that folder structure, within that visual representation, they've also got this added text here to explain what they've done with reasons why. So 
This learning outcome, I think this is the final page for the learning outcome one. And this particular student has split it up into tasks. But again, you, you, don't, you don't have to do it in that way. It can just be, it could be just one presentation um, and assess, assess it and actually just holistically assess where the evidence is. But this particular learner has split the presentation into learning outcomes one. So this is the end of the evidence for learning outcome one, and it was awarded a merit, not quite a distinction, as though a range of terms are being used. There's not particularly a wide range of examples um, within the evidence. So learning outcome two. And straight away, I think here, um, we can see effective application of technical skills. The annotations, I think, are really effective because they explain um, the choices that they've made. And again, there's some definite evidence there solving straightforward problems that is required um, to achieve a merit if we remember for learning outcome two. So it's actually about solving the problems for a merit, uh, not just sort of identifying them. nation here about how they've created their assets for their product and there's lots of linking back to the brief which is what's required for Again, that you'll see that there's some reference of using existing images within the asset, which is just a reminder from the unit specification here. Learners are not expected to create all of their own assets. They can do, um, but they must. The, the more focus is really is on ensuring that they are prepared correctly for the intended. So they can create their own assets, or they can also edit existing assets. And then there's some of their own um, photographs here to be used. Details of actually how they've edited um, their images and photographs, and the techniques and tools that they've used. What they've done, how they've coloured, how they've acquired the images, and what they've done with the images. Um, what they've done. Again, they've continued with the justification of choices that they've made and the techniques that they've used in these annotations.
And again, this is further. Just aware on the annotations, they've been quite consistent, which again was a key descriptor consistency to demonstrate the ongoing straightforward problem solving that's required to delay. And then we'll just finally move on to one more question, please. Uh, so you just have a check of your um, connection there. The audio is dropping a little bit quiet at the oh. moment. Okay. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that sounds clearer there. <laughs> Is it might be my internet connection. Apologies for that. I hope you can still hear me. So moving on to learn outcome three here. Um, so again, quite a detailed review. And again, it's important to read this in your own time. Because there's quite a lot of Quite a lengthy review. But again, if you remember, it's not always the quantity, it's actually the quality and how it's actually hitting that criteria that's important. And then they've evidenced some feedback here. In this case, they've asked their peers. And they've included positive and negative feedback. I think this is quite common um, for learners. I think particularly at level two, um, they do like this approach of um, even better if and what went well. I'm sure you, you probably all recognise this type of approach. Then these next two slides show how the review is focused on improvement based on the feedback. These again demonstrate the advance evidence that that's needed to be awarded a merit of learning outcomes three. I think it would be fair to say it's not a full explanation that, that a distinction requires, uh, but it's definitely uh, sufficient there for a merit. And again, with these advanced improvements. Then finally, David, we could just maybe just quickly go to the student's website. Sure, I'll bring so, that up now. Yeah. And I appreciate I've gone through that very quickly. This is why I do say make sure you download the slides. Um, so hopefully you can see the difference in um, not just sort of the aesthetic look of the website between the past and the merit student, but also the technical skill, um, hopefully you can see has demonstrated here as well. I think they produced a, a really, um, a really nice site actually, combined with the colour schemes and the assets that they've actually created. They've worked really hard on this. OK, thanks, David. I'm just conscious of time, so I'll just pause to see if there's any questions come in about um, the, the, any, for anything for the unit, really. I think it's just open to any questions. Sure, I'll just have a look now. Um, and just while I'm, while I'm just bringing up the questions, um, if you, those people who are here, if you wouldn't mind, I'm just going to put on this uh, poll again. Just seeing how you currently feel in terms of confidence, if it's an error after looking at these and seeing some examples of work and so on. So I'll just have a look at uh, the question a minute. So um, how do we sign up for the email newsletters as we don't seem to get them? Uh, Robin, you'd have to uh, contact our customer support team directly. I'll show you the NCFE ncfe.org.uk, there's a contact us bit. You'll be able to message them and so on. Uh, with GDPR, we need your permission to send you out any of these emails. So you may already, your contact details may be on our system, but may not have permission to send you stuff like that. 
Uh, my pupils have used Serif Web Plus. I'm worried because uh, Adobe have stopped Flash Player. Will this disadvantage pupils? They have saved to disk and exported to PDF file. When they check their work this week, uh, their Serif wasn't loading the Flash in the web browser, Chrome, or Internet Explorer were not displaying the Flash objects. So uh, that's for you, Lerlin. Yeah. Well, for this, if there is, see, it's quite tricky if they actually haven't got a product for this unit because they they do actually need it. They need it to you know to, to get the assessment um, to be awarded assessment for learning outcome two. However, if you've got spread, um, screenshots or any evidence, I think you mentioned that they did manage to export it to a PDF. Um, then that is valid evidence there. I think what you'd need to do is have a conversation with your EQA and explain to them the issue that's happened here. And as long as that there's evidence of it, you know, if it's in, in any cases where learners' work becomes corrupt or it's lost, um, you know, you need to work with your EQA just to make sure that you keep them up to date and, and explain uh, what's happened with them. But by, they work with you to make sure that there's, that learners aren't um, penalised or disadvantaged there. You know, what we wouldn't want to do if they spent a lot of time creating that product, as long as we can see some evidence and along with, um, you know, your sort of confirmation that you've sort of observed them doing that, then your EQA will be able to work with you um, to address that. Okay, um, just checking here. Uh, for learning outcome three, does it need to be a complete product or can it just demonstrate where technical skills have been used? For learning outcome three, which is the review, I think you might be referring to learning outcome two. Um, so they do have to create an outcome. So there has to be an interactive um, outcome, if you like, but if it wasn't, sort of a full functioning sort of four or five page website or you know if it was they were doing an interactive game you know we wouldn't expect to see sort of it could just be one level as long as we can see the demonstration of skills and there's some um you know evidence of problem solving if you remember that's required for learn outcome two then that's okay as long as we can see an interactive outcome um even if it's in the form of a prototype then that's okay Uh, let's see. The the rest uh, of the website works. I think that's just a follow up from the um, Serif oh, okay. Web Plus uh, query. Okay. Um, it, it's Adobe uh, stopping the Flash Player. Okay. And yes, it was a learning of outcome two. Does is that still okay then? So the rest of the website yes. works. It's it's ability to stop the Flash Player. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Just keep your EQA uh, updated, <laughs> just so they're aware of anything. Okay, and um, that does seem to be those questions. I will just mention about the uh, current COVID-19 uh, information uh, that, I'd, that I talked about previously. So the um, uh, our current guidance uh, is that this qualification, the interactive media, it can uh, have tags submitted for it. So tags are absolutely fine. You would have to submit tags for um, the individual units. So external assessments, units one, two, three, and four, and so on. So it does have to be on that sort of uh, level. If you've got fully complete units, that's good. You can just submit them as normal rather than as a tag. But either way, whatever units you're submitting tags for, if it's the external assessment, if it's internal assessments, they need to be based around some evidence. So there should be some evidence regarding how you made those judgments. So that's the most important thing. So do make sure that you have some evidence. It could be from other uh, completed assignments. It, maybe it's some mock work that you've done. Whatever it happens to be, do make sure you've got the evidence to base those judgments on. Um, I hope that helps. We will have some webinars um, coming up as well regarding V-certs and uh, the approach to awarding next week. 
Uh, so what is the guidance around external assessments? Um, well, there is no external, well, the January external assessment still occurred. Um, it was optional for centres. Uh, you could either put learners in for the external assessment that begun at the end of January or not. There are no external assessments happening this year, so they would be teacher assessed grades. Uh, so if you've got evidence for internal assessments, well, the external assessment is based around the those same units, so you could use evidence from the internal assessments for evidence for the external assessment as well. That's absolutely fine. If you've done some mock exams for the external assessment, that's fine as well, as long as you've got evidence to base those judgments around. If you're unsure about the evidence that you have, you can always contact your EQA as well. They might be able to provide you with extra feedback and information regarding, uh, regarding suitable evidence and so on as well. As I said, the um, the off-call framework for awarding has been published today, so we're going to be emailing out centres and making sure we get um, additional guidance out. And as well as this, the um, the adaptation templates uh, should also be updated very soon. I don't know, they may have already been updated uh, already with that advice. I'm just, I'll share the screen actually, just so you can see it's at the minute. So hopefully you can see I've gone on to the graph design qual hub page. I'll see if it has been dated yet, but we have an adaptations tab that has been added. When you go there, you're able to download the PDF. This has been updated actually. And as I said, I would love to give you more information. I haven't had a chance yet to digest all of these changes itself, but we have tried to make them a bit more obvious by highlighting them in yellow. So you will see them there. New document regarding the approach to alternative arrangements are on there. So there is extra information that has been added in here regarding this approach including information about external assessments. So um, best thing is have a look at that approach to awarding document that should hopefully help. For those of you who are still here, um, the handouts, I've just updated, there was a little error on the handout. So if you've previously downloaded the PDF, if you just delete that one, the new one there uh, without that little error should be able to be downloaded. It's just something I spotted um, midway through. So do download the new handout bit from that tab. I'm just going to see if there are any other questions at the moment. Um, there doesn't seem to be any other questions right now. Okay. Um, when you do leave uh, the webinar, a little evaluation will pop up. Appreciate any feedback you have. For now, though, um, we will be having some more webinars on Unit 2 uh, next week, and then at the end of April, uh, there's a Unit uh, 4. So by all means, you can sign up for them as well. In the meantime, though, do take care. My very much thanks to Leslie Davis for her support during this webinar as well. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Uh, Yes, thank you everyone and stay safe.